Ali, Ali Wong. Wong. Oh, oh. That is, yeah, that's that's. If I had thought of her, it is a good answer. It is a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> if I hadn't been trying to beat you maliciously, that would have been a right answer. <laughs> Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? Doing great. Doing today, good. this evening. Yes, that's true. Evening. It's a party yeah. tonight. This, is, we're this having, is, a, this is a nightcap. Yeah. It's like we're having cocktails with friends. Mm -hmm. And they already feel like friends, even though we met them just minutes ago. Yeah, it's, been a, it's been a tight seven minutes. <laughs> we packed a lot in there. It's true. So it's Love Fest Day. Mm -hmm. We always love a love fest. Yeah. And I've been looking forward to this one for a while. You guys have been hotly requested. True. Yes, yes, but don't come in just yet because I have to talk about you for a second. So our guest today, uh, you may know from the YouTube world, the Bachelor world, we are joined today by, first I'll say the gentleman in question, Dave Neal. He is a stand-up comedian and the YouTuber extraordinaire, uh, the host of the Bachelor Nation News YouTube channel, a power recapper. <laughs> I still want that defined because I feel like we're power recappers, but then I have to admit he he really recaps. Well, he's OG. He is OG. Yeah. Yeah. He's more OG than us. And of course, his better half, Tasha Courtney. She is a model, actress, blogger, influencer. She's at Tasha Courtney. Dave is at D Neil Z. <laughs> And this lovely couple, they are engaged. They are joining us from LA and they are the creators behind the travel blog Tada Travels, T-A-D-A, -A, and the hosts of the Sex Actually podcast or SAP. You guys understand the acronym. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here today. Dave Neal and Tasha Courtney, we're so excited to have you. You know, it just blew my mind that Shandy is your two names put together. <laughs> I honestly didn't know that. This interview is over. <laughs> Yeah, no, did, did you know that? No, but I, I'm glad that, that you put it together. I didn't even know that. Sorry about that. You it's guys are all people. Tasha and Dave. Yeah. I just I just sounded like a good brand you had. I had no idea. <laughs> Apologies. Well, it's okay. You it's know okay. what's funny is a lot of people write in, like the podcast is called Dear Shandy, and it's all about giving relationship advice. And we'll still get emails that say, hi, Charlene and Andy. And we're like. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> I've, I, I, I was called Adam yesterday. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but so there you now go. you're an Andy. And Andy is such a warm. You guys, you guys are such warm souls, you two. Like, oh my god! I, that's, that's immediately what I told Tasha because I never, she never, want, you know, Tasha's. She go watch her TV shows. She, you don't want any part of this. But she's, <laughs> I was like, I was like, no, they're different. You're gonna actually like them. And I'm trying to build my trust with her that she's actually, you know. So I was like, yeah, this is it. This is a good one. We'll okay. be our very warmest tonight. I promise. Yeah, we're not gonna let you down. <laughs> no, the feeling is very mutual. I could confess when I first slid into Dave's DMs I was like I've been kind of sleuthing your channel for a while you're the source of all of my bachelor news knowledge <laughs> yeah Charlene has used you I mean in in critical moments to get <laughs> pressing bachelor information yeah all right so today it's a love fest I don't know if you're familiar with these I get the impression Dave might be and Tasha's not so Tasha I'll just explain he gave me the crash course okay so today's just all about your relationship we're gonna have fun today we're gonna ask you about your relationship dynamics and all the nitty-gritty but it's really meant to be fun and more like a double date so we're gonna chime in and just have fun sound good yeah. and sounds great good. and before we get started I would like to mention this is very important that you are a combination of four first names <laughs> Yes. Big. Never trust somebody with a first two first names. Now, technically, we're a combination of six first names. Oh, no. Because our first names, middle names and last names are all first names. Mm -hmm. okay, well, OK, so the middle see. name being a first name, not as impressive. I appreciate you going out there with that. <laughs> I'm not going to give that to you, but but it is very unusual. And um, I, I will say two things about that one i never remember people's names with two first names but for some reason i don't i'm sorry you're you're a newcomer tasha but dave <laughs> i somehow always remember your name you're the only two first name person whose name it i it just i know it i could mm -hmm. wake up in the middle like 4 30 in the morning someone says uh bachelor recap dave neal it just comes <laughs> there's a to lot it. of um republicans like paul ryan there's a lot of like those types of guys out there that have two first names but my, I know my, I know someone doesn't know me well if they call me by my full name, Dave Neal. But then like once they get to know me, they'll call me Dave. That's kind of like the barrier between whether or not someone knows me. Or ah, not. 
Oh, right. So they sort of they sort of teasing you by calling you by your full name. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I feel like because you cannot trust someone with two first names, that because you both have two first names, that you therefore can be trusted. We cancel each other out. Yes. Oh yeah. Was this a discussion on your first date? <laughs> Let's define first dates. <laughs> well, actually, okay. That yes. is a perfect segue. <laughs> Let's see, segue see right what in. I did there? Okay. Go ahead. So we're going to start way back at the very beginning. And I may have done a little sleuthing online to know that we're talking about 2010. How did you meet? And tell us what your first impressions were of each other. Oh, no. I think Tasha likes me to say my version first so then she can correct it. Is that right? Sure, go ahead. Okay, otherwise I would let you go first. But my version, <laughs> we worked on a, we were doing background work on a TV show, Mildred Pierce, HBO. And in New York City, when you do background work outside of the main bubble, you, they tell you, hey, meet up at 30th and 3rd, and then they bus you to the location. So 5 a.m., 30th and 3rd, getting onto a private bus. Just randomly, I knew that was the call spot. Hey, is this for Mildred Pierce? I show up, I got a newspaper in hand, my bagel, just ready to go. And I walk on the bus and I noticed the eyebrows. I, I noticed the eyebrows, <laughs> logged it, didn't say hi, went, smiled, went back, found a buddy, had conversation later that day. All right, let me interject because you're <laughs> just brushing right past the details. All right, so he chooses a seat, two, three rows behind mine and proceeds to be the loudest person on the bus for this entire hour long 5 a.m. bus ride. Ooh. None of us are awake yet. Maybe he was awake, he got his coffee and his paper. None of us were awake. We're, we're just trying to snooze and relax on the bus. He's jabber jawing about all of his auditions and this and that. He's not disagreeing. And, <laughs> and I'm just like, somebody shut this guy up. <laughs> I. But hours later, at lunch, she you could she had some sort of boredom, and I think she allowed my banter in, and finally just and you know, dealt with me. We and, took a picture together. We we're all in our outfits. We we're in front of some classic car. We took a little photo together, and he tagged me on Facebook. Right? That's the that move. How it came? That's the move. Old old days. You took the photo, right? And yeah. you tagged me, or took it with the DS, oh, not a DS, a point and shoot camera. Ooh. I still have the memory card for, with the photo on it. And, you know, 1920s, old time yeah. photo, oh, completely yeah. dressed up. And uh, she's got like her Adidas shoes on. So that's the giveaway. You but otherwise, it you know, she looks like uh, our great grandparents there. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll send you the photo. That's you cute. It, I will um, insert it right here. Then, but here's the deal. I wasn't necessarily hitting on her. I found out early on she had a boyfriend and it was kind of one of those like, all right, log it. Cool. Didn't become friends. But we became Facebook friends. But we became Facebook friends. And that friends. was the key, wow. right? Because then we stayed in touch. I moved to LA just a couple months later after we met. Um, but we stayed friends on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> and then Ooh, I think when he came hot. out to Los Angeles, like a year later, I was like, oh, let's hang out because I miss New Yorkers. I'll tell you, the transition from New York to LA is challenging. <laughs> it, it's challenging for yeah. your social life. So yeah. Um, yeah. I like your peanut so gallery. I, I was ready to take in any New Yorkers who were headed. To the <laughs> any, <laughs> whatever came in with the trash, yeah. just take it. But I also, at this point, I was going through a nasty long distance breakup, uh, you know, whatever. And she was with her own thing. And we were just, we were, we were both truly just friends. Single. So we're hanging out at, at just as friends. Um, Which sounds a little bit far fetched. If this was like a new bachelor relationship, you would go, oh, well, this is like, you know, two, you know, two people that aren't dating, hanging out as friends. We were just friends. It was really we went nice. went on a lot of hikes, which is another Los Angeles. Wait activity. a minute. You went on hikes as friends? That's how desperate <laughs> I was for friends. Wow. Because I, so anyway, to, to, to make the long story less long, two years go by, I moved back to New York and then, and then I kind of get this vibe that Tasha is into me now. And I find out I have a <laughs> Tasha is into you. Yeah. Well, because I knew what it was like to be into her. But this was the first time where like, <laughs> like she visited New York and she was giving me a hug. And it's like, oh, Tasha's this is a little bit. This is a little more. Tasha moves slow. I got a hug. Nice. Was so it I, a know, slow hug? Was it like a lingering hug? Is that what happened? Yes. Yeah. Multiple hugs. I remember the bar. It was somewhere in the 20s east side. I remember I was like, I, I logged it. I just logged it. Was it was the Bengals bar. I go, oh, Tasha's, attra there's an attraction there. You know, it's funny. You uh, can tell a lot from a hug. I, 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 I agree with that. You can yeah. really tell yeah. a lot from a hug. A hug can, if a hug stays in too long and gets a little too squeezy, 
I mean, Tasha, I think we can agree as a woman, you're not doling out hugs if you're not interested. No, but you're, you may be doling out hugs, but you're not doling out that specific type yeah, of hug. Yeah, you're not doling out the full body contact hug. Yeah, where you're like squeezing in, you get to make sure yeah, everything's yeah, making contact. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, yeah, what, I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Or dole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dole is the key word. So she started doling out hugs to me, multiple, three, four hugs. Yeah. <laughs> We were like leaving. I was like, do I make a move? It was a whole hug fest. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I got in the, it's in the journal, guys. And uh, and then anyway, a month or two later, I get a gig in L.A. and take the gig. Un, not because of Tasha, but then first person I text, I'm coming to L.A. We were dating, I would say, three, four months later. Now, there was still like getting out of the friend zone, although it wasn't standard friend zone because it was like long distance you know, a lot of well, recalibration. We had, we had built a really great foundation of friendship, honestly, because when we were first hanging out the, the first time he was in LA, um, we were both seeing other people. So there was no expectation. So it was very comfortable. You know how it is. Sometimes when you're hanging, you're both single and you're hanging out with a new guy and you, you it, the vibes are a little, and you don't know. No, <laughs> we both were dating other people. So it was very relaxed um, in the way that we got to know each other. And then when he moved back to Los Angeles the, the second time, time we were both single so yeah it was then we had to deal with the vibes but because we already had that foundation that solid foundation of friendship it was like less scary i was still being shut down um <laughs> i i remember because i have a very good memory here uh we we, we might have kissed we like I, I went in for the kiss i had a show at a, at a murray calendars there's a comedy club behind it tasha came we got pie where all the white-haired people are there very just like, I mean, we started going to Marie Callender's as like our place because it was so just the worst, fun. fun, like weird, you know, homey place to go. And we kind of maybe kissed or whatever. And then I think the next day I texted her and I said, um, I think we should go on a date. And then the next day she responds. She like took a whole day. She Ooh. responds the next day. Wouldn't that make things weird? And then I respond, <laughs> you just did. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I kind of drew this boundary where I was like, I don't want to be friends with someone who's then going to go fall in love with someone else. There's enough friends out here. We can make our own friends. And I had this moment um, where I said, I just need to like do a friend breakup. I just, that's not what I'm looking for here. And suddenly didn't need the friendship anymore. Mm. Uh, They always say like, oh, there's no such thing as friends. You know, it's always an ulterior motive. We, it it was progressing to a point where it needed to get to that next level or not. And I just said, I'm not going to wait around if there's another guy who's going to come around. So I went back to Rhode Island. I had some shows. I come back January 17th and I'm on the, I'm on the tarmac. I, just, I take my phone off airplane mode and I have a text and it says I'm at the airport. I didn't invite her to pick me up at the airport. So, <gasps> oh, oh my God. Wow. Grand gesture. That's a grand so, gesture. <laughs> Tasha starts, <laughs> she starts doling out airport rides. <laughs> So uh, she picks me up. I meet her friends that night. And I think we, I think we haven't had a day off since that was like, you came over, we hung out, we had wine and that was it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, You, you met the friends that day. So I got the friend approval and that was it. I mean, who would not give Dave Neal the friend approval? I mean, look, come on, come on. Comic living in LA. So uh, affable. (laughs) How could you possibly go wrong? So I have two questions based on that story so far. First, Mm. I am going to want Tasha's rendition of the story. Although you weren't, you didn't seem to be making faces. It seems like she, yeah, agreed. No, I mean, pretty accurate. I had forgotten half those details, but yeah. Quick question though. When you were sort of you know, there was, you kissed once, you hung out, it was kind of flirty, but you were dating other people. And Dave, it sounds like you wanted more, but she wasn't really willing, willing to give that to you. I guess you were afraid of being friend zoned, which is a very real thing. Oh yeah. I guess my question is, how was many there hikes a- can you go on? Sorry? I said, how many hikes can you go on? Yeah. How many hugs can you <laughs> receive? So yeah. I guess my question is, was there this kind of unspoken when we're single, like down the road, like this is probably going to happen at some point kind of thing. Cause those exist. Oh yeah. I'm just wondering. I actually don't think so. No, I don't think so. I'm obsessive. And I was obsessively mourning another, I was probably annoyingly crying on Tasha's shoulder about my other thing. Oh wow. Mm. It's almost like I was just obsessively blind to what was right in front of me. But I also think Tasha, you were going through your own un- unfulfilled situation. Yeah. Um, I don't think I was still like hung up on my like breakup or anything, but I was definitely keeping my options open. I was kind of dating, you know, nothing serious, but I, I knew that I 
wanted my next relationship to be the real deal. Mm -hmm. Like I I was tired of dating. So I was being very picky Okay. um, about the people that I was seeing and which is why I needed the friend approval. Like I was getting, everybody was voting, right? They were voting. Well, you you know what annoyed me? You know what really annoyed me is we on a hike, we climb up some tree. We're just sitting in some tree. How pathetic could I be? Right. And in a tree. In an actual tree. You climbed up a tree and you sat in a tree. Were you kissing oh, in the uh, tree? On a limb. <laughs> on a limb. You're out on a limb? But yeah. You're out on a limb or you're in the tree? But you're you're on a limb. To a dating thing. But okay. she she goes, I think I'm going to date older guys. And I got I got annoyed. I was like, I'm 26. Yeah, I can't compete with an older guy with his shit together. And I got upset. I got like upset about that. I was like, uh, and it, it was almost like, it, it almost like she crossed this boundary towards where we were going that I didn't know was there. And it showed me that I did want her. Uh, and all I wanted was like a shot to pursue it. Mm-hmm. And by this point, as friends, we had like gone to some desert rave, uh, uh, stayed up overnight, having kind of like real, I mean, you know, not to be cheesy, but like real mystical type of stuff. We had like a real good connection. I've never wanted to marry anyone else. I've never wanted to be in a long-term thing. Like I was perfectly happy. And I think every guy or girl, anyone out there should really pursue their own thing. Cause I was like filled to the brim with enough of my fun that I wanted to be a part of, I wanted you to be a part of it, but I didn't need you. And I think that's when I was like, that's when I kind of had this ultimatum, but not in a manipulative way. Just like, Hey, this is where I'd like to take things. And she was like, Oh, and you know, and then maybe what I know now, you know, is maybe you just needed a little bit of time. And I'm kind of like, on top of people to be like, Hey, what's the decision? And she just needed, you just needed a minute. And then you showed up at the airport for me. And then I was able to understand your actions versus what you were saying. I think. That's a very cute gesture because the airport sucks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And And driving in LA to the airport sucks even more. Yeah. There's almost no face. I wouldn't want to see meeting me at the airport. Even my enemies. Yeah. And I'd be like, wow, that's really nice of you. Like it must've been the most like heart racing moment. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. I was like, what? Huh? I was like high five in the guy next to me. I was, <laughs> I was just alone on a flight. I was like planning what bus to take home was going to be a venture. So Andy, I can't help but notice how smooth and youthful and clear your skin is looking these days. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I owe it all, well, somewhat to genetics, but also to apostrophes Trent and Owen, ah, which I have right here. Yes. As you can see, the, the prescription tag. <laughs> So in case you are new around here, Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that provides oral and topical science-backed medications for your skin, delivers them right to your door. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be fun to compare the differences because we both use Apostrophe's Tretinoin, but we use different strengths. So mine says Tretinoin 0.05%. What does yours say? Mine? Whoa, that's a lot of (laughs) Tretinoin. Mine's only 0.018%. There you go. That goes to show that when we filled out our quiz with our photos Mm -hmm. and our skincare concerns, I had already been using prescription tretinoin for years and you were new to it. And therefore, the board certified dermatologists who looked at our files thought, oh, she can handle 0.05%. He should start a little lower Wow! on the strength. I'm a newbie. And so again, you fill out that quiz and you mention what your concerns are. So let's say it is aging, wrinkles. Let's say your concern is acne. I love that you do not have to go to the dermatologist's office to get a prescription. I like it. Especially if your problem is buttony. That's not something you want to have to go to an office and explain to anybody. (laughs) This should be done in the privacy of your home, online, anonymously. Like anything you would do anonymously online, like leave terrible comments on someone's podcast (laughs) or anything like that. (laughs) We have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with an apostrophe provider when you go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and use code Shandy. This offer is only available to our listeners. So to get started, go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and click begin visit. Then use our code Shandy at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash Shandy. And use that code Shandy to get your dermatologist crafted treatment plan for only $5. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. Well, Andy, Dear Shandy is overdue for a website. Yeah. I know. This is on me, but I'm also just, I have a lot going on right now. You got a lot to do. But... I've got to say, long before we ever partnered with Squarespace, which we're about to talk about right now, we actually got the domain and the website and the subscription through Squarespace already. 
We did. People that might not know that because we've actually been advertising Squarespace fairly recently, but for a year and a half, almost two years now, we've actually had dearshandy.com and the website all booked through Squarespace. I love it when an advertiser comes along and it's like, oh, this is the most organic thing ever. It's like someone paying you to breathe. (laughs) So Squarespace is a fantastic, a magnificent website platform. Yeah. Truly nothing else compares, if I'm totally honest. No, it's the best. And as we've mentioned in past ads for Squarespace, we have both dabbled in its main competitor and there is no comparison. No. Not just saying that. It makes it almost too easy. It makes it so easy that when you're doing it, you're worried that if you can do it this easily, then everyone's going to be doing it this easily (laughs) or more easily than you. And so I'm going to rattle off a couple of the features that Squarespace has, just in case anyone out there is considering starting a website. Trust me, you want to go with Squarespace. So let's say you provide a service. So let's say you are maybe a therapist or an accountant. I don't know, something where someone would schedule time with you Squarespace has that function. Let's say you are a blogger, you want to start a blog. They have blog functions galore. My blog has been with Squarespace for over seven years. Mm -hmm. Let's say you want to sell product. They allow you to sell product. (laughs) You can see where I'm going with Mm -hmm. this. So check out squarespace.com slash Shandy for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code Shandy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get a website anyway. Now you're getting 10% off and it's the best website builder you can find. So it's free money. (laughs) It is free money. So again, that's squarespace.com slash Shandy offer code Shandy. Okay, and Tasha, when you did go to pick him up the airport, what was the thought process there? Were you like, I know I want him. I do want to get him vetted by my friends, but this is my grand gesture. Like I'm ready for this. I don't know what I was thinking when I decided (laughs) other than I, my friends wanted to meet him. I I don't know if my friends had maybe already met some of the other guys that were in my like circle at the time, but, um, I, I, yeah, I think something had shifted, I think with Dave and I was like, you know, this is like a, a make or break moment. Like, you know, once you go forward, like once I let him out of the friend zone, there's no going back. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think I was a little hesitant to lose a friend Mm -hmm. because we really did have like such a strong friendship. Um, But you make it sound so pathetic when you say let him out of the friend zone. I was making (laughs) the I was. No, you're taking it that way. No, it's like, this is me being protective of like a friendship that's like really dear to me. I didn't want to screw things up by like just frivolously like trying to have a relationship when like I didn't know if there was like really potential there, you know? Mm-hmm. I, and, it's, I, and, it, and it makes so much sense knowing how we are now. Every restaurant we go to, she looks at 15 locations and I'm like, that's the one. Uh, the wedding place, I wanted the first one we saw. And you know, and it's good that she's, you're more of a decision maker. Otherwise you might be stuck with some asshole. I mean, you know, another asshole. It's, a <laughs> like, similarity. It, it's nice that she mm-hmm. built her mm-hmm. team. Yeah. You know? Well, and actually but Dave, that's- perhaps unwittingly, you actually had good technique. You know, I think that, had you not asked for that space or really sort of laid down your boundaries and been like, this is what I want. And if you're not ready for that, like, I think I need a break for myself. Perhaps without that space, she wouldn't have come to that epiphany. I think you're right. Because a lot of times guys can be so overbearing Mm. that it's like, you're like, oh gosh. Yeah. (laughs) You kind of touched on your first impressions of each other. I mean, you noticed her eyebrows, but the first time you really connected, I want to know what your first impressions were of each other's personalities and then how those have changed, if at all. Well, my first impression of Dave's personality was just that he was very loud. Like I said, he was <laughs> totally peacocking on this bus, just being so over the top. And I'm an introvert. So that was, it was a lot for me and maybe a highly sensitive person. But um, but then when we were one-on-one, I think, I think we were fine. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't like, so she essentially didn't, didn't like my energy when I wasn't even talking to her. So that's not even fair for me. I was with a higher energy guy. Like, it's like you run into someone you haven't seen, you know, you're talking. So Tasha thinks I was like making this big theatrical performance, but I was just big with the guy I was with. Who was that? I don't even remember who it was. Um, (laughs) But first impression, I would say, I mean, to be quite honest, I guess we didn't have great first impressions of each other because I had a good physical and first impression of you, but you were in a very, mo- you were in a bad mood. It was end of May. It was really I humid. Was. I was really moody you, that you were day. trying, she was trying to get like your boyfriend to pick you up 
from you like you wanted to quit that day you were so mad and I and I but I was like like the younger brother energy that I am was like hey let's I try to cheer her up and, I, and again I wasn't trying to I had no other motive I knew you had a boyfriend I was just trying to cheer you up and um you ended up probably staying for the day I don't know yeah. but that, I guess it's a it's a complicated thing because it's not your standard we met will you take my pin and then we're dating it's not it's just it was very much like other options came and went. We had both probably saw what, what wasn't working and maybe find found a way to realize that our, our differences can be assets if we like regulate them mm. appropriately. Yeah, we're um, definitely opposites attract. Mm. You know, we're two peas in a pod. Our personality types are very different, but I think we complement each other. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can actually relate to that. I envision if my first impression of Andy was at five in the morning on a bus and he was two seats in front of me with a particularly boisterous male friend. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have had the best first impression of you either Mm. because like, it's just a different setting, different people. Like with some of his guy friends, he's just so over the, he can be just so extroverted and loud and over the top. And I'm also an introvert. I think I would have been like, who is oh, this yeah. guy? I think there's many angles of me that if you saw first, you would have turned the other way. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Luckily like- for me, I, I showed up with my top A plus game. <laughs> yes, exactly. One on one. Andy, I think I think I think these I think uh Tasha and Charlene, they might like our humor. I think we've got I think we've got our finger on the pulse of what can make our our lady smile, which I think is important in a relationship. I think I think it you're absolutely right. The secret I, sauce. Yeah, the it's secret not so sauce. secret. It's, it's pretty secret. <laughs> No, I mean, everyone knows that funny guys get girls. It's true, but not many guys can be funny. Well, yeah, so Mm -hmm. it's the pursuit of humor, but the secrets... Oh, so you're saying the secret sauce is knowing how to be funny. Secret sauce is knowing how to be funny and knowing how to pull it back. You write comedy, you bend, but you don't break. A lot of people break. A lot of people break. Yeah. And especially when they're nervous and hitting on girls. They break. (laughs) They break all the comedy. It's all broken. Just shards of glass. You're so right. I mean, when you get on stage as a comic, you get adrenaline and all of the tools that are there to protect you make you less funny if you yes. let them consume you, which yeah. is nervous energy, yep. which is, yep. you know, all these things you have to, you have to kind of like play it cool a little bit. Yeah. And there's no greater moment than knowing your act is working. And our act as men is kind of like the version of ourselves that that's our charming version. You know, if you want to look at it in a negative way, are you manipulating? No, you're just like, this is my A material, Tasha. This is what works. Are you into it? <laughs> I mean, women then- have their versions of these two. Yeah. You know, it's not like I didn't strategically wear a form fitting dress on our first date or do my hair a certain way or like play <laughs> the game in a similar fashion. But many, many women say that humor is very important, especially <laughs> on The Bachelor. <laughs> they always say that. I like humor. So next question. What is different about the current partnership you guys share that you believe makes it successful versus past ones? Ooh, I don't know. I have a slim sample size of successful or any relationships. I just never put the, I never found someone I really wanted to put the effort into figuring out. I see Tasha as like a Rubik's cube. Mm -hmm. Like I, when, when we fought and still sometimes I, I have to know how to speak her language or it is not going to go well. It's like (laughs) a bomb. And then I mean that respectfully, I have to be very (laughs) sensitive to how you want to communicate or, or it's like, try again tomorrow. And I don't like, and I am such a people pleaser that it's like, all right. My, Cause my, like we said, just, just like my way of communicating is like smothering. Like, all right, I'm just going to smother you. I'm going to hug it out. And she's like, gosh, get away from me. <laughs> so I've had to learn to like negotiate giving her space while also showing her the love and the, and all that support, which doesn't come easy to me. It's a different language. And that's been learned. What? But I would say this, the secret sauce was just commitment. Like we both really wanted to make it work. We still, you know, everybody, especially in the beginning, like has their challenges when they're getting to know someone new. Mm. And I feel like those first few months are make or break for a lot of relationships because you have your first fight and you like, you're figuring out if it's worth it Mm -hmm. to like break through this barrier. And I feel like we were both like, very loyal and very committed. And we like, were willing to put in the extra work to figuring out where our miscommunications were happening. 
And which, uh, which was tough because I think we both probably have, hadn't been too challenged before. Like we both probably thought we were communicating in the right way. And mm-hmm. that's the dangerous thing when you think yours is like, no one's just the right way. But I was like, how, how does she not? Yes. Yeah, so I raised my voice a little bit when I try to get my point across. That's because you're running away. I need to yell louder. <laughs> like what are you talking about? <laughs> I, that was my Catholic house I came up in. That wasn't yelling. But to her, it was like, that was like decibel reader Shouting. through the, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what do you, how do you fight now? I was show me a fight. How does it go? How does it unfold? I'll, this is a good question. I mean, it's so, Usually we I fight a lot less now. I feel like we've worked it out, but well, it's good that you fight less now. That's that's a, that's an improvement. You also mellow out, I think. Yeah, you stop caring about everything. Yeah, there's definitely well, this. You speak each other's language, I think, is like the real key. Um, yeah, we had a few fights that were that would sound so petty because it would be to me needing some simple affirmation was was like life or death, not in a needy way, like tell me you love me, but in a way where I was like, I can't believe, and it sounds, it sounds so petty to say, but like getting off stage and she doesn't ask, she doesn't say, hey, good set. Like I've played sports my whole life. (laughs) Everyone else was telling you, I didn't feel like I needed, I I remember this time we got ice cream after and you got in a fight and silently licked our ice cream on the way home. It was like, (laughs) (laughs) the worst way to eat ice cream is silent treatment. (laughs) I mean, if you're going to give someone the silent treatment, it's the best done while you're eating ice cream. Yeah, It's just makes it kind of enjoyable. But it was like, whoa. And to her, that's not that's not the thing she needs. And maybe she got affirmations her whole life. You're great at this, Tasha. You're good at that. But like I thrive and fuel off of that. And I've had to learn. And what's been a big blessing with our predicament with the success of the YouTube channel is the extra time that I have. You know, you're working 40 hour a week side jobs, uh, 40 hours a week stand up, which is unpaid. You know, you're losing money. Um, you know, the pressure of getting engaged, but the brokenness of not having any of that success. And then, and then finally you start getting some wins and you start getting extra free time and you feel like you're contributing to the relationship. And now like we got to do yoga yesterday and go to a friend's barbecue. And I was like, you know, Tasha, I used to have to work every weekend mm. and spend mm. so much time working. Cause if I didn't, I wouldn't get better at what I'm doing. And I'd be bitter because of that. And you guys know, as artists, you're just constantly trying to fight this fight of how much free time do you have to your art, to your love, mm-hmm. and to yourself. And God bless us that we got out of it alive. But that was really tough, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, that was really a challenge to just be a provider. And I don't go a I don't go a second of every day without having that gratitude. I think my audience knows how like I mean we I was up, you know, extra early this morning just making content, trying to be there. Tasha wakes up, coffee, just living that kind of every being fitting all the boxes because for a while there I just wasn't proud of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one is more dedicated than you, I've got to say. I think there was one episode you had where you were like at an amusement park. Do you know which one I'm talking about? You were like on your phone at at an amusement park. Um, Magic Kingdom. Thanksgiving. I was impressed. (laughs) Yeah. It was great. Yeah, it's very impressive. But Dave, I actually relate to what you're saying. I told Andy early on in our relationship, you know, I'll, I'll be doing an opera and he'll be in the audience. And one time, like I had my aria in the first half and then there's the intermission. And then the second half came and went. And afterwards he was like, you were so great. And I was like, you didn't text me at intermission to say I did great. <laughs> and he that was, was like, the last time I did not text her at intermission. <laughs> by the way. See, you just got to learn each other's language. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you, but I sang an aria. You didn't say anything about it. I mean, intermission, we were both free. I was at my phone. Why didn't you text me? So yeah, You're communicating right. needs. But it goes to show how much you care about what you do and you care to, to, for him to value that because if he can't value what you do, then how does he value the relationship? And there's that like, and you, and you learn to realize, all right, maybe they don't think exactly the same way I do, but like, I want Tasha to think I'm very funny. I, like, my success de- demands that it's my career, you mm-hmm. know? So yeah. it's, and, it, and it's, it's, I don't need it the way I used to pro- probably because I'm getting the affirmations in other places. It's like, I know things are going in the right direction, but for a while there, it's just a dog fight. And you're like, at the end of the day, I just need, I need you to believe because that's like the only spark I have. Mm. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, who I, else really matters in the end? No. So I have a quick question about your careers because you do have your separate things. You're very independent and you're doing your own 
things. But you do kind of work together here and there. I mean, you have Tada, and it seems like in terms of content, there's a lot of crossover. I was wondering if that comes easily to you, if it's effortless, or if it's something you have to navigate. Does it make things harder? Oh, we stress every time we have to work together. Uh. It's 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 really it actually is fine. It's really fine. And, and we work well together. But he, I think um, we both have a very clear vision for what we want. And so we put blinders on about anything else. So when we work together, particularly like when it comes to Tada, um, I really like run all the photography and then he edits all the videos. But like there's always a disconnect between what my vision is for our photos and what his vision is for our photos. So we, we have to take it slow and really spell it out for each other. Yeah. I'm (laughs) quantity in your quality. Mm. Everything I do, quantity. I provide five videos a day, no edits. You get me. This is how I am. And you have, but I have to sort through thousands of photos. So I'd rather just set up one good photo and take one. Oh my God. I so relate Mm -hmm. to that. Yeah photos and having to go through them all it's <laughs> it's tough because i can't i tr- i try to take good photos but i'll take a few photos she goes how does it look i'm like it looks great and then she'll look at it and she go who the hell this looks to-? I, go, I it look good to me. i don't know like i i just yeah, can't she's the, the, she's right sorry dave you're wrong <laughs> i'm no, siding what, with her you don't even know what he's i don't even know what's going on here but i know she's right about this we got this camera where we can monitor it through the cell phone so we can be in the, in the, like we went to Belize and Tasha had to shoot some hotel photography and we were able to both be in the shot with the monitor on our cell phone, you know, frame it all up and then hit the three second timer and do the things. Speaking of which I'm dying to know, Tasha, this is just a personal question for me. It's not really about your relationship, but how involved are you in Dave's whole YouTube orbit. Like, do you watch The Bachelor? Like when he's off filming five videos a day, what are you thinking? Like, do you watch them? I'm I'm curious. Yeah, me too. I don't always watch The Bachelor. I really try, but these past couple seasons, um, I've just been too busy with my stuff to have the time on Monday night. (laughs) Like, no, if you want to watch a TV show, you watch it. No one's (laughs) like, oh, my job's too busy. I can't watch Succession. (laughs) Well, we we I, get it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I sit down on the couch with my computer or my phone and I try and watch the TV, but then I just think about all the stuff I have to do. So I end up just looking at my phone or my computer instead. It's but she and yeah, I are so, similar. But, so you're like oh career God. or Clayton. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh. No, Tasha, well, back, you and I are very similar. The batch will have nothing happen until it all happens. Yeah. So I feel like she like episode three she's like boring and then and i'm like yeah and, you know, and it all blows up in one moment yeah, yeah. it's like the, it's like nba finals or like the world series like i don't watch any baseball games and i'm like it's like the sixth game of the world series i'm there that's it yeah. and i'm and i'm like oh there's a man on second with one out this is big and to <laughs> someone who doesn't watch baseball, like what do you mean i'm like well if he is a single then he scores like i like you oh can what tell are you talking about you're like preseason talking about who's getting drafted and like guys in college you're following college players dave you're, you're not even yeah. this is you're way too deep yeah. juniors <laughs> in high school i start to track their uh, height and weight <laughs> proportions but that's but that's what makes because I'm a I'm a bottom feeder in Bachelor Nation. I'm a lobster, right? So no, I take you're, whatever. You're not a bottom feeder, not in the YouTube space. Well, but it, it's because I started, and some some people are ripping me off now. Shout out to them. But I started, <laughs> <laughs> I started making. Would you like us no- to give them shout outs? Name them. <laughs> they've, been, they've been on your show. Let's put it that way. Uh, there's other. <laughs> Um, we're like the first non bat we're kind of blue collar for your, uh, your community because we, we don't have any endorsement from the show. In fact, we're, you know, I've never, I've, you know, up until this year, my content just never got pushed by even YouTube. So I was like, all right, maybe I'm doing something wrong. And then when it all hit, I was just making videos that fell through the cracks. So everyone had a video about Zach and Tasha breaking up, but I had that seventh video about Zach and Tasha breaking up. Like I was, going, you know, I was basically back of the human centipede, just making content. Oh There's a market for the back of the centipede. Are you kidding? You know? I mean, I am uh, your target demo because people are like, "Did you hear about blah blah blah?" And I'm like, "Who? What? Like, I just can't. I can't. No, I'm not sleuthing who's dating who now or whatever." So I actually learned about. Chris Bukowski and Anna Redmond from you. So thank you. Oh, wow. Yeah, great. 
And again, I don't have any desire to break news. I have no desire to be the best at figuring news out. I just want to bring it, bring the news and then have my fun with it. I just want to have fun. Mm -hmm. And the show has always been the common denominator, the water cooler. It's like one of the only water cooler shows left. Mm -hmm. uh, everything like that's batch made on Netflix. You can't really talk about it, but for six and a half days, we can, we can, we can, you know, talk about every single conspiracy about the show and people, and especially during the pandemic, just want a friend. And they know as soon as I started making regular content, people started realizing they could tune me in while they, you know, wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. And that was like enough. And I had to realize I didn't need to do any editing or fancy music. I just needed to make 15, make, they're called mealtime videos, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I try to make them eight minutes. I try to make them eight to 20 and if they're longer, they're longer, but you know, just, just make whatever feels right to me. And, and that's it. And don't, don't second guess it. Cause 90 and cause Tasha has been like, Dave, rather than making the fourth video, just make three good ones. Sometimes the fourth video takes off. You have no idea what's going to pop. So I just kind of make whatever I can make. I'm in awe of just the, like how it's, how does your mind work where you're just like, I'm going to make that fourth video today. I'm going to make that fifth video today. And I'm going to find a way to talk. I'm the only person here. I'm going to talk for 15 minutes straight. How do you do that? Well, so it's a gift. I, you're just <laughs> born with it. I wasn't. I was this not is, born with that. This is why I'm glad it's working out because we, it's almost like I've been an inventor without being able to invent anything. And it's finally getting an audience. So Tasha finally has to accept that this is feasible. <laughs> <laughs> Tasha, I have to ask, are you surprised by how his channel has taken off? Or is it like you always <laughs> knew this was just a matter of time? It's been a, a, an amazing surprise. I, I don't think I really like ever consider like had an expectation for how it would go but um he's obviously a very driven person i mean like nobody works hard he's always up at five in the morning because the dog wakes him up and then he goes right to work um but yeah i i always had high expectations but i you never know what the thing is gonna be mm -hmm. um so yeah we're just pleasantly surprised yeah I'm, i it's it's perfect for him like you said so, so sometimes you're born with it and like <laughs> he's born with the blessing of being able to yabber on and um yeah it's you know what <laughs> it's uh, honestly if you if you really love what you do and you work really hard you should never stop that person that person should just yeah. be unfettered to that's nice go what a nice thing to it's say. hard to find Wild stallion yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely right it's hard to find something that works in in this industry and when you do you just don't want to let it go and it's not because mm -hmm. it's not some maniacal control thing it's because i like what i do and like yeah some of the best moments are just getting up way before uh, like i was up today was a little different because the dog got me up early but i was like i could go back to bed but it's 5 a.m we got this will smith video to make let's go for it you know <laughs> <laughs> before tasha woke up and like that's a good start for a monday um wow and yeah, like I like I find the I find the humor. Some content's heavy. You got to respect it. Like if you want to get into the social, um, the 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 I don't know the the the, the PC side. Mm -hmm. You want to. You or, always handle like, that I mean, very deftly. I've got to say. I'll be honest. Last week I made a video about about a Rachel Lindsay Tasha content, and I knew it was going to be tough to make. And I had I had multiple leads DM me saying it was good. I had strangers hating me. But like I tried my best to service it without being, well, I'll put it this way. There's a lot of people that say like, what does some white guy have to say about all these other issues? And I get that. But then there's a lot of other people that say, well, Dave's got a huge audience of white people and they sometimes want to hear from me because I can get through to them in the way that other people can't. And you just have to, you you know, when it comes to topics of, you know, either the Me Too movement or, or, or other issues, like just become as educated as you can about it so that you do it right. And, and I've made mistakes in the past where I was educated afterwards. And it's kind of like every video you want to make as many good choices as you can, but be willing to learn and grow. And if I get corrected in the comment section, fire up another video. I messed that one up. <laughs> but, but like, that's the communication that's so important. If we all waited till we, you know, had a PhD in every single topic, we would never get anywhere.
So I think just conversation is good and just being willing to have a pulse on where, you know, where, where the discourse wants to go. And just, and also as a comic know that I'm not afraid to get it wrong, but I'm going to try to get it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Andy, I think you and I know a thing or two about hair yeah. and hair care. Mm-hmm. I think one of the greatest misconceptions about hair products in general is the idea that it's one size fits all and that shampoo that I might use, for example, might be the shampoo that you should use. So not true. And that's one of the reasons I love pros is because their hair care is customized. You know, I'll tell you something over the years, and I'm not like a products person. Mm -hmm. Honestly, no exaggeration. I've probably used over a hundred shampoos in my life. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Easily. For sure. You've probably used like a thousand. (laughs) Not kidding. Not exaggerating. Yeah. Some are terrible. Some are great. Some you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Some dry out your hair. Some your hair is greasy the next day. You're not sure why. And that's why Pros is so fantastic. You fill out a quiz online about your hair. It's by the way, not it's it's a lot of stuff. It it's is. not it like actually, just do you like hair and is your hair long or short? Yeah, it's like yeah. a lot of stuff. No, yeah. There, it'll be a, what are your concerns? Do you have a medium amount of hair? A lot of hair. And they even look at your zip code and tell you what specific weather and climate and water situations. Yes. There are there. The water one got me. And UV. <laughs> yes. It's really amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. And then they formulate a custom shampoo and conditioner and just entire hair regimen according to your specific personal hair and hair needs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so for me, for example, my hair is straight. I think it's like medium thickness, mm. medium to thick, medium but to the thick. hairs themselves are actually quite thin. Oh, so you must thin have a medium. lot of thin hair. Yeah, I don't, my hair is not that coarse. It's long. And one of my main concerns is volume and greasiness because it gets greasy really fast. It's long, thin and greasy. <laughs> not a, <laughs> not, not, Thanks. Not, a <laughs> not something you really want in other things, but yeah. Mine is short, curly, coarse. Dry. Dry. Yeah, your hair, it's funny. It looks better as it gets greasier. It's true. And, uh, you know, not that everyone, you know, all many thousands of people listening have to know this, but I do I do flake. <laughs> got some flakes happening. Yeah. And the pros shampoo that I got makes my hair less dry and helps a great deal with my extremely sensitive scalp. So pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash Shandy. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash Shandy to get your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. Look what I got. What is this? <laughs> what is this? Tell me what it is. It's dinner. Dinner in a bag, detailed and simple instructions. Mm -hmm. What more could you ask for? We're big fans of HelloFresh here at Dear Shandy. What I love about HelloFresh, beyond the fact that the meals are healthy, delicious, very easy to make for Mm -hmm. the most part, like you're not slaving away in the kitchen for an hour, which I have dabbled in other meal delivery kits. And sometimes you are in the kitchen for an hour plus. Yeah. It's uh, Yeah, that's not good. No. But also, how convenient is this? It comes in a bag. Paper bag. A paper recyclable bag, but mm-hmm. everything is contained. Right here. Yes. In a bag. It's, it's like, not it's all like these lunch. loose parts. It's like it's like when your mom used to give you, here's your bag for lunch. <laughs> you go to school, it's right here, except you have to cook it. As a kid, you probably wouldn't be into that. But as an adult, I actually look forward to it. I look forward to cooking these. Yeah. I don't cook unless it's one of these. <laughs> <laughs> so HelloFresh, in case you are new around here, is a meal delivery kit where all the ingredients are delivered directly to your door, like so. And it has really served as sort of cooking lessons for us in many ways. Totally. I know how to do things now. Yeah. So head to HelloFresh.com slash Shandy16 and use code Shandy16, that's one six, to get up to 16 free meals plus three free gifts. <laughs> The three free gifts gets me every time. It's so over the top. It's not enough. So again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Shandy16 and use code Shandy16 for up to 16 free meals plus three free gifts. Okay. I want to get back to your relationship quickly and then we're going to get to the game. Any beliefs about relationships that have changed now that you have this one? Do you believe in soulmates or do you think we... we Worked. Do you, do you think we found our our soul? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Because I I I would say 
I've always, I would say you, you get what you put in, like you water your, you got to water your plants of the relationship mm -hmm. and well, and I guess we'll notice Tasha is great. By the way, Tasha is great with her actual plants, but you'll notice when you'll move a plant to another area, the sun doesn't hit it. You're very keen on when the plant's not getting its nutrition in, in the relationship. You have to be the same way. What I, what I have a hard time with is the barometer of which the, like the plant will go from flourishing to dead within a day before I realize it, the plant being, you know, how we are. And then I'll have to realize, oh, I've been a little hard on my content. I've been a little hard on my stand up comedy. Let we, we need date night. You know, mm -hmm. if, if the date night plan was for Friday, it's got to be tomorrow. We need to make, you know, so being able to recognize when we need to take care of us and, and like go, we, we call it device free time, getting rid of the constant comments we're responding to, like putting the phone in another room. So would you say then that you, a belief before was that you wouldn't need to do that? You wouldn't need to necessarily the water, water the plant. It would just flourish with or without water. Well, I think there's a, I think there's a, there's, there's the way that single guys think. And then there's the ways that guys in relationships think single guys like, no, I just pursue my own thing. I don't have time for that. And then in a relationship you go, okay, I, it maybe maybe I could reach quote unquote success at an earlier date. But what, what fun is that if I'm not enjoying the route? So with Tasha, there's a lot of times where Tasha wants to go on trips and do certain things. And I've had to overcome my hustle culture and be like, okay, I can go on this trip with you. Mm -hmm. I, but whenever she brings it up, like, you know, there's always some last minute deal, babe, we got to go to Tahiti. There's a sale. It ends tonight. And I, and I immediately get triggered like, ah, you know, I immediately go crazy. And then I have to like calm down and be like, all right, let's talk about this and, you know, and, and, and like work on my own reaction because you really don't know how, how triggered you are until you're in a relationship. And then you can see that trigger wear on somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like I would get wildly triggered when you would be like, let's go to, you know, somewhere. And I would get so mad because in my head, I'm not where I want to be. I want to work harder. And it's like, mm -hmm. I need Tasha to like calm me down and, and take me to Belize and you need <laughs> me to like, to, to, to be your ride along, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Tasha, do you agree? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if I had any like sort of core beliefs previously that I've necessarily, um, you know, been turned upside down, but I, I do think that I found the person that I was most compatible with. And, you know, we were fortunate that we both like were willing Aww. to put in the work and, you know, we're committed to, to the concept of this relationship and making this relationship work and figuring out our communication styles and, and working through problems instead of bailing, mm -hmm. because I think the younger was uh, like to bail, you know, I, I was sort of counting. She, ba she bailed on me multiple times. I was just like, we're not, I'm not going to, you know, I wanted to resolve whatever we had and bury it. I wasn't going to let a relationship go. Like she, you know, one, one time she tried to pack all my stuff up and send me home. And I was like, no, <laughs> pack, pack your stuff up. All of it. That's usually and not the way it works, but that's interesting. Like, nice approach. Respect. Pack. And I ordered pizza. It was probably the Oscars or so. It was like some award show. And I talked to her and I communicated. And then whatever hysteria you really had worked yourself up into was completely wrong. It wasn't how I felt. And I didn't react to it. But I learned that that she had valid feelings that weren't getting addressed. And we we talked about it and then I unpacked my stuff. But it was like, <laughs> oh. So you unpacked like, your stuff. Yeah. She didn't help you unpack? <laughs> <laughs> After packing it all up, yeah. I mean, it, she, that's the least she could have done. <laughs> could have, at least. Uh, but it, it, those were very powerful moments to realize Tasha wasn't gonna be in a relationship that didn't that where she didn't receive the love and nutrition she needed. But I was also giving great. I learned how to give grace to realize that her recipe wasn't necessarily mine. We're like a Venn diagram. We have travel and experience in like experience in the center of our diagram. Mine comes with my comedy and hers is travel and blogging and modeling. And we can for sure share this rich center. And that's okay. Like we don't need to have the same exact goals. We can like live on the same ranch and mm. and cheers to each other's goals. I love how Tasha's a woman of the grand gesture. She shows up at the airport. She shows up yeah. for the bagel. She packs, she packs his, his stuff up. So nice of you. Did you fold them nicely or was it a haphazard job? 
Oh, first of all, I don't want, no, no, no. I, I got to make sure. Cause I I'll always go for the joke first, which is every comedian's, you know, downfall is I'll go for the joke. First. Did you lie? Did that not happen? <laughs> she didn't pack your stuff. No, it happened, but it, it happened, but I, I really, it, but it also but you also included the word hysteria. <laughs> I know. <what? laughs> You know, all these disgruntled women now. Uh, no. <laughs> that's a paradise that's, reference. In all honesty, we've it's it's a it's a gift that we've put ourselves in situations, whether it was through fate or whatever, where we did give each other multiple chances. And and we challenge ourselves too to sort of work through like whatever our hangups were in previous relationships. I think mm. you know, like we we learn to stick it out and give it a shot and try it a new way. When in other instances, you probably would have just called it quits. Mm. Yeah. And look, no offense to some of your other bachelor people, but we're battle tested. We're eight years. That's a good, that's a good, we've got some bandwidth yeah, we here. Have I think you underestimate the battles some of our bachelor couples have been through. <laughs> yeah. I think couples we've had on longer than, who have been together longer than you is Desiree and Chris. Yeah. Who else? Is there anyone else who's been together longer than that? Garrett and Nicole McNamara. Garrett and Nicole McNamara. Yeah. But yeah, no, you guys have been together you're, for you're a very long time. You're in the top, top, at least top three, I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. It is now time for the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Yay! Yay! You guys, it was a very intense answering session. Very intense. There's a lot, it was very heated, it's, a lot of friction. No, I wouldn't say friction. It there felt some competitive. Friction. Some friction. It felt competitive. Yeah, there's some friction. That seems accurate for us. I would bet on us. We not, are competitive. I would bet players. on us not doing well. Well, I, yeah. I, I always make predictions, oh, yes. which Andy have been very accurate. I, uh, not to toot my own horn, but I mean, they have been yeah, pretty accurate. Pretty, like 50% of the time you get it. Yeah, but I'm always within one. Okay. Never more than one. I'm going to say that Dave is going to win Two to one. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Wow. You guys, yeah. don't you want to prove him wrong? Yeah. See, now you got something to prove. I think that them going through their, like, trying to answer might have been all a facade and they're actually going to nail it. That's, that's very but possible. But it was very funny to watch because we would ask a question and Tasha would be like, oh, I don't know. And Dave would be like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. True. Let's get to it without further ado. Tasha, you're up first. Tasha, okay. if you could have one superpower, what would it be? And make sure you show the camera. Oh, oh wow. There it is. Nice. To fly. Oh. I respect that. Yeah. that's. I mean, okay. that's, that's as good as it gets. Okay. So Tasha would like to fly. Dave, did you get that? Oh, superpower. My, oh, so you think she... Mind reading. Mind reading, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't consider that as a superpower. I just... It didn't occur to me. <laughs> 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 Okay, so Dave did not get that point. I'm sorry. No, no, Dave, how about power, you? Though. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Flying. Uh -oh. oh. Oh. Well, you guys aren't going to be flying together on this one. <laughs> oh, she uh -oh. got it. Oh, she got it. Very uh -oh. nice. Okay, Tasha guess flying. Uh, All right. Uh, you, would, you would be a mind reader. That would be your thing. That was a good guess. All right. Well, yeah, I obviously got the answer right. So. She's not a mind reader. She was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tasha, very she good. Wants. You're winning one nothing right now. Yeah, that's Me it. Too. Okay, question number two, Tasha. What TV show do you watch because of Dave? Meaning you would not watch this show if it were not for him. Bill hmm. Maher. <laughs> okay, very nice. Bill Maher, that's the German spelling. Bill Maher. <laughs> I did it totally wrong. <laughs> she didn't even the name of his show. She just said his name. Wait a minute. You could say if it's the same show, you it, it, it doesn't matter. Wait, you're what? saying you saying you got that, but you're upset that she said it's not politically incorrect. Wait, what is he talking is about? What's happening here? Is it called real time? Yeah, it's called real, oh, real time. time. That's right. Sorry. His first show was politically incorrect, right? Yeah. That was right, right. Okay. That was a long time. Okay. Ago. Well, we knew what she meant. Yeah. Dave, what, what did That's you think she would say to that? Oh, he got it. Wait, what are you, what are you complaining about? You I'm just it. hyping up the answer. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, I, I thought that was a bizarre choice, but it's the accurate one. She hates him, and I always make her watch it. <laughs> okay. So, so you were actually hyping up the fact that she picked the same wording as you, even though the show is yeah. called Real Time. So wow. you were trying to get more credit. Oh, I see now. Okay, I was confused. 
It's just unclear. further showing I, we know. I didn't realize you were just being a terrible okay. person. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I'm so impressed you got that. Okay, how about you? What TV show do you watch because of Tasha? Bridgerton? Bridgerton. Don't you love that I know before I know it comes that I in saw- focus? <laughs> It's like totally I just blurry. saw the shape and I was like, it's Bridgerton. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Tasha. Very Bridgerton. nice. Very good. Well, she's already. Well, uh, yeah, a- Andy, she, she, my is, she is proving you wrong very quickly yeah. here. I expected more from you guys. I was just giving you incentive to do better. <laughs> Are we tied? I think we're tied. No, no she's Dave, winning 2 1. No. <laughs> she's beating you. Yep, you're getting beat. Tasha, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Okay, is this one is a little um We're not gonna get broad. I, I just gave it a broad word, but it's okay. Sweet. Sorbet. What? Oh, that's uh I, I think the uh the 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 survey is not gonna accept that. Well, we'll see what he says, but okay. that is very broad. That's extreme that's that's like saying like what's your favorite animal and you pick like a tree. I'm not <laughs> sure that counts. She hasn't had sorbet in five years. Mint chocolate chip. He put mint chocolate chip. Yeah. Okay. I mean, to be fair to Dave, that is an actual ice cream. Yeah. So. No, Dave, I feel that you were sabotaged. You were yeah, sabotaged. I think you were sabotaged. Yeah. She wants to win. She's out for yeah. blood. She's, she's, no she's, a she's a killer. She's a killer. Okay, Dave, how about you? What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Reasonable. Cookie dough. It's good, okay. And it's a good classic That's, flavor. That's okay. That's yeah. an interesting font. Okay. <laughs> Chocolate chip cookie dough. Wow, that, she gets yep, it. She gets Ooh, that. She is slaughtering you, Dave. Oh, this is not turning out well. She could be cheating. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. Usually couples, even when one wins and the other loses, it tends to be close. So, Tasha, I'm getting kind of excited because usually we haven't had someone pull away like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, you're really getting beaten well, Dave. If we threw out her ice cream, which is clearly she chose a non-ice cream. Well, no, but literally all of the ice cream that I buy is sorbet. It's not actually ice cream. We hardly ever no, you buy get like coconut because milk I like ice the cream. dairy free. And so I like the mango sorbet or the raspberry sorbet. Mm. I'll Andy, I'm gonna send you photos of the freezer. She no <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will take those into consideration. Question number four was chosen especially for you two, mm-hmm. Tasha, mm-hmm. if you could only listen slash watch one comedian for the rest of your life, who would it be? And you're not allowed to say each other. Who would it be? Bill Burr. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah, he's good. I respect that. I like Bill Burr. Hey, for me or for you? For me. You like Bill Burr? That's what I wrote down. That was <laughs> I'm first. getting the feeling that Dave didn't get this right. Just have, <laughs> just have a hunch. Just have a hunch. What did you put, Dave? Ali, Ali Wong. Wong. Uh, oh, that's, yeah, that's... Yeah. That's, if I had thought of her, it is a good answer. It is a good answer. <laughs> if I hadn't been trying to beat you maliciously, that would have been a right answer. Uh, she's got this bit about sorbet you'll love. Yeah. All right, Dave, I'm sorry. What's your sorry. favorite ice cream? Horse. <laughs> Dave, you did not get that point. How about you if you could only watch or listen to one comedian? The Bill Burr. Burr. All right. Wow. And Tasha? Uh-oh. Oh dear. Bill Burr. Oh, oh, she's slaughtering this is not, him. This oh, is it's not, so this cruel. Is ugly. This is ugly. <laughs> this is so cruel. This is ugly. I just know you very well, I guess. We I'd are. rather her than me win. I'm I'm happy she's <laughs> 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 says the sore loser at the last minute. <laughs> Oh, I've always wanted her to win. I never wanted to win. Well, I, no, you're so a good man. You're a good man. But I am for sure those two. I'm I'm holding as iffy answers by you. Why? Because Ali Wong made you cry laughing. You love Ali yeah, yeah. Wong, and you know you would have chosen. When they her. asked the question, I was thinking of comedians. I was thinking of podcasts that we listen to. The only one I really like is Bill Burr. Okay. <laughs> I think Dave. Part of the New York game is underestimating how bloodlust. <laughs> ish your your partner is yes, and so. and she wants blood she's yeah, going to the jugular she, wanted to win. she is the kind of person who will say sorbet when asked what her favorite ice cream is. and I'm that's confident. that's what you're dealing with I prefer sorbet <laughs> i like the fruity I, I mean we just gotta- i prefer <laughs> pizza i mean you know <laughs> you know it's four one we don't even need to know what the score is here this is the biggest difference in scores we've ever had but we're still going to find out what your answers are to number five tasha when you were a child what did you want to be when you grew up a traveler huh 
Like, like a, an Irish traveler or just the person <laughs> yeah, who travels? I wanted to work for National Geographic. Okay. And I didn't care how I did that. I was either going to be a photographer or a cartographer. I don't know. Okay. I was going to work for National But Geo. I feel like when I give my answer now, you're going to say, oh, yeah, that too. Okay. Well, let's see. <laughs> this might, I, I agree with you. She's going to say that. Okay, he wrote NASA slash astronaut. As opposed or, to sorry, like a no. private astronaut? <laughs> sorry, that was my bad. NASA astronaut. NASA, NASA not, not, not a uh, Coleco astronaut. <laughs> sorry, I'm busting your ball. Wrong. You're not wrong. I wanted to be an astronaut too. My mom famously told me I wasn't good enough at math for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> your mother sounds like... My mother. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So Dave, I feel bad for I you. I do feel bad for you. Yeah. I think I think what you didn't realize, you were in the water with a shark. Yeah. You oh. thought you were just yeah. swimming with guppies. Oh. <laughs> you underestimated. I, she played it up too. She'd be like, I don't know. Your your wife is a killer. <laughs> Cold blooded. Challenging several of her answers, but they, uh, she, that's okay, what she wrote whatever. down. Fine. But also. But this of, game it, is about knowing each other well. And maybe you should have known that she would have done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've known she would be a traveler. <laughs> I've told you the story about Nat Geo just as much as I've told you the story about my mom telling me I was bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a, a traveler, an astronaut is kind of a traveler. You know what's cool? He travels, travels. travels to all the sorbet destinations. Yeah. <laughs> The best sorbet in the universe. Okay, Dave, yeah. just for fun. When you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Baseball player. Oh, me too. Oh, nice. Nice. That's cute. Good stuff. Tasha, did you get that? Oh, wow. My a clean God. sweep for Tasha. Whoa. Wow. This is like, I'm. Wow. That's, this is. This is the most unexpected score uh, I think I've ever seen. Uh, that's incredible. Five, one. That's you guys incredible. don't understand. Usually it's like three, two. Four, three. And Garrett was 5'2", right? I don't remember what she got. But I, don't, I don't think she got You're one. the second person ever, Tasha, to get five out of five. I didn't. Well, wow. maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's <laughs> I'm easy to read. Maybe Tasha's hard to read. Oh, maybe you know? I just know you better than you know me. Maybe I'm going to buy her. Stepped it up a little I, I, bit. I'm going to buy her so much sorbet. She hates <laughs> sorbet. She's going to be so sick of sorbet. <laughs> so, Tasha, how do you feel right now? Do you feel happy that you've won, or do you feel distraught that your fiance knows you so poorly? Mm-hmm. Oh no, there's mm-mm, no mercy in games, honey. No, All no, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't think this has anything to do with Dave knowing her poorly. I think she's cold blooded. <laughs> I do feel like she strategized this, yeah. and you know what? I applaud you. Yeah, me too. I think you see me how too. complicated women are. She knew exactly my ice cream. She knew exact. She 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 read me like a book. I don't know anything about her because there's seven. <laughs> you would you could have on any given day you could have put seventeen different answers for all of those. <laughs> Listen, Dave, but, you, you got to know your you got to know your enemy. Yeah, you don't. Here's what's here's what's important. I've got turkey soup already cooking on the oven right now. Yes. And as long as she has soup ready, she's happy. That's all that matters. <laughs> so even if this interview was to go poorly, which it didn't, I love you guys. We would still have warm turkey soup ready for her. So. Oh, that's all you need. <laughs> After a 5-1 victory, turkey <laughs> soup will soothe everything. Yeah. And maybe a massage. We'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At any rate, you've got some making up to do. But that was impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. Thank you. Tasha. <laughs> I do, Andy. <laughs> I have to officially announce it. I oh, do this yeah, every sorry, time because we, we have I, I our applause the gun. We got to officially announce it. Tasha, 5-1, you are the winner of the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Yay. Yeah, bravo. Very nice. Very bravo. Crushing, indeed. Crushing. Yeah. You guys, you were so much fun. We had such a great time with you. This is good stuff. I, I have to tell you guys, I've teased that we're coming on here and our audience loves you. It's Aww. no joke surprised that you guys are probably some of the warmest people within the community. And mm-hmm. I mean, if you, I, we would love to see you uh, like uh, perform and do all your stuff uh, when we're in New York, because you guys are just fantastic. Oh, you're the sweetest. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's get together. Yeah. definitely. We're always here. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually not always here, but no, yeah, no. in general, I'm going to text you in the middle of your performance, how great you are. <laughs> <laughs> At intermission. Exactly. <laughs> not before me. Don't, don't dare. <laughs> Thank you guys so much and go enjoy your turkey soup. Yeah, We're good. setting you free. Thank you. This was so much fun. Yeah, thanks thank so you. Much. Thanks, so nice guys. meeting you. Bye guys. Good night. Bye. Bye. <sighs> you know, 
Can we talk about his work ethic for a second? I know this is supposed to be about their relationship, but I cannot get over how hard he works. It's insane. He wakes up at five in the morning and just starts cranking. Cranking. She'll wake up and he'll already have done three videos. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's why he's done very well with, with his channel. Yeah. So, it's it it very, very impressive. And just, I also like the lesson learned here, which is that your first impression isn't necessarily... The final impression. Mm -hmm, that's true. This yeah. is one of those situations where they just didn't know it was there. Yeah. They were just dancing around it. There was, it's like, oh, wait a minute. It's under, we, it's been we, under we, my we nose the whole time. This. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, nice yeah. when that happens. That's old school. It is old school. And also I think some people tend to be like, oh, I'm at a man, not my type moving on. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something to be said about both of them being like, now I'm looking at you through this different lens and yeah. should we give this a try? And then yeah. it becomes like, do we want to jeopardize the friendship? And that has well, paid off. Well, they jeopardize the shit out of the friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it's been destroyed. <laughs> Transformed. Transformed. But uh, no, they were, you know what? They were adorable. That's the word I use. Okay. Adorable. <laughs> I want to give them a little squeeze. <laughs> good hair. And good eyebrows. hair all around. Yeah. yeah. A lot of good hair there. Well, hopefully the Shandies will have enjoyed this because they hotly requested this. Hotly. 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 You know what I've learned is in the podcast space, it's really like they just want to see you in different arrangements with other podcast hosts. I think so. Isn't it's, that funny? It's like, it's almost like UFC where you're just like, oh, this guy <laughs> is karate and this guy's a wrestler. <laughs> what happens when they fight? Yeah. It's hilarious to me because pe people for a long time have been like, you should have Dave Neal and Tasha to have Dave Neal and Tasha. I always say Dave Neal. I can't say Dave. He's not no, Dave. No, he's Dave Neal. He's, Dave he's Neal. not Dave. Yeah. No, it's not. He's yeah. Dave he said Neal. people know him well, say Dave, but we don't know him that well. So no, we're no, still no. in Dave I'm Neal never calling him Dave. He's always Dave Neal. Yeah. But it's funny. I do think people get to know someone over there, someone else over there, and they're like, let's see them interact with each totally. other. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's a wrap then, Andy, for it this is. love fest. Sure if you enjoyed what you heard today and want to keep Dear Shandy in business, and hopefully you should because we listen to your requests. Like, look at this. This whole episode is, yeah. is a love letter to you. <laughs> Keep Dear Shandy in business by liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, following us on Instagram and on TikTok. It's important if you do TikTok that it's an even rhythm. Oh, very good. Very good. And telling your friends and leaving us Apple and Spotify podcast ratings and reviews and generally doing all those things. Those mm -hmm. nice things. Nice. Nice things. And on that note, that's a wrap. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye. Dear Shandy.